All right, all right. Y'all know what time it is. This is Anthony Stewart here in Maryland, Atlanta, Maryland to be exact. I'm here at the National Training Center. I am ready today. We are about to finish up uh, April as being Financial Literacy Month, but I'm calling it uh, April is Financial Empowerment Month. Remember, I shared with you uh, about a week or so ago why I'm not going to call it financial literacy amount. But anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. I have a hot topic for you today, and, uh, and we're going to be on our way. I'll wait for a few people to get on, and then we'll go right ahead and jump right on into it. Man, I am fired up. We are having a big, big meeting here in Greenbelt, Maryland. It's Friday. And I'm excited to meet some of my business partners who I have not had the pleasure of meeting in person yet. So it's going to be a very, very high time here in Greenbelt, Maryland. Uh, we're looking forward to over 150 people in attendance. Actually, probably close to the 175 now. Uh, so we are really excited about that. Hey, Shelly Gloucester. How you doing, young lady? <laughs> Maria Miami, how you doing? <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. I am jealous because I know it's 80 something degrees in Jacksonville, Florida, but it's just barely tipped 50 degrees here in Maryland today and the wind is blowing. So I am very jealous about that. And um, so I don't know what we're gonna do about Maryland, but we'll get there, we'll get there real soon. So for those of y'all that's coming from Florida, uh, bring your jacket. It is supposed to be, I think 77 degrees on Friday. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, we will go from there. But anyway, you know, I always start off with a few announcements. Number one, uh, tonight at 7 o'clock, we're going to have our chief marketing officer, uh, Cash Value King, the author, uh, Million Dollar Roundtable, uh, highly sought after speaker, Douglas Aza, along with the other Million Dollar Roundtable member, Sharice Richards are going to be doing the opportunity call tonight at 7. How you doing, Robin, Lester, Tabitha Green? Everybody's doing well, Carolyn? But anyway, uh, so that's tonight at 7 o'clock. And then tomorrow night, Douglas Aze is doing, I call it the Midnight Classic, doing a 10 o'clock training on Wednesday night at uh, 10 o'clock. So our agents are the best trained agents in the industry. I know that, hands down, it's not even debatable. Nobody is training like we are here at American Classic Agency. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the subject matter for the day. And I hear this a lot, you know, compound interest, compound interest, compound interest. In fact, I love compound interest. But the key with getting compound interest, it has to be in the right financial tool. If it's not in the right tool, it's not a good thing, All right? I like to have my money in a bucket where I can put in as much as I want. It's not controlled by the government. Right? I like to be able to access it whenever I want, right? without having to ask anybody, without having to write a two-page letter explaining why I need my money. Right? The other thing, I want to be able to use my bucket of my compound interest money where it's uninterrupted compound interest. It doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in the market. I also want to be able to use it as collateral. You know, when I go in and take money out, I don't want to have to worry about a structured loan payment. I want it unstructured where I can pay it back when I want to pay it back. And if I choose not to, that's my choice. You know, in other words, I want to be in control. And I suspect there's a lot of other people that want those same things. I want it to be safe. I don't want to risk. You go to work for your money and then you go put it at risk. Why do people do that? Here's what I've learned. Moderate gains without losses will outperform a volatile marketplace. Case in point, we all know what happened in 2008. People lost 40% of their portfolio. And I hear it all the time, I made it back. No, you didn't make it back. That money did not come back. In fact, you lost more than the 40000 or 50000 whatever it is. You also missed the opportunity cost on what the interest that could have been earned on that money. So compound interest is great. You know, actually, it's the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest. However, there are times when compound interest is not good, right? So let's talk about that for a minute. We know why it's good. Interest on top of interest. It's nothing like it. You're earning interest on top of interest, year in and year out. That's great if it's in the right vehicle, like I said. But when is compound interest not a good thing? 
Well, if I got compound interest in a taxable environment, it's not a good thing. When you got compound interest in a taxable environment, that means you got to pay taxes annually on the growth of that account. So if it's gaining 5% or whatever every year, you got to pay taxes on it, right? Compound interest is not good if that interest is compounding in a taxable environment. EI 401k, thrift savings program, 457, deferred comp, your IRAs, all of the alphabet suit. It's not a good thing if you're compounding interest in a taxable environment. And where do those taxes come from? When you're paying it, where does it come from? It comes from your current income, also known as your lifestyle, right? And when that happens, you're generating an often overlooked hidden contribution to support the taxable account balance. So compound interest is not good if it's coming in your thrift savings program, if it's compounding in your 401k, your IRA, your TSP, your 457, it's not a good thing compounding interest in a tax infested account. So I just wanted to put that out there. Compound interest is great only if it's in the right vehicle, right? And there's only a few. And one of them just happens to be cash value insurance. I'm telling y'all, y'all better stop shunning cash value insurance. That's why the government made it available where you can put an unlimited amount of money in it as long as you set it up right. You know, I always ask, why does the government tell you how much you can put towards your retirement? Why? Because the government wants you to be dependent on them. Y'all better stop shunning cash value life insurance. Y'all better quit listening to some of these folks that keep saying buy a term and invest a difference and all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to tell you that ain't what the wealthy people do. You know, they got tax laws that back this stuff up. Look it up for yourself. Section 101, Section 7702A. The reason why wealthy people continue to stay wealthy is for two reasons. Number one, they never miss an opportunity to earn interest on their money. They never miss that opportunity. Why? Because they set up their own private banking system, right? They have uninterrupted compound interest inside of cash value insurance. The insurance company sets the minimum interest rate, a guaranteed interest rate. We better quit shunning cash value insurance. We better open up our eyes and begin to understand it is the best kept secret and we'll make it and not be a secret at ACA. That's why I'm doing these things so we can get educated, so we can take the advantage of the same tax laws that the wealthy people do. You wonder why they pay less in taxes? Because they understand where to put their money and not have to worry about shoveling it right back out to the government. They, wealthy people stay wealthy because they never miss an opportunity to earn interest and they pay less taxes because they hide their money inside of cash value insurance. Y'all better stop shunning cash value insurance. Right? This has been going around for over 100 years. This ain't nothing new. You've heard me say this before. That's how Disneyland got started. That's how J.C. Penney came out of the 1929 stock market crash. He tapped into his private banking system. That's what Doris Christopher did with her company, The Pan for Chef. That's what Ray Kroc did to start McDonald's. Y'all better stop shunning cash value insurance and thinking it's only a death benefit. It has become a tax shelter. That's why banks do it. Look up BOLI, B-O-L-I, Bank on Life Insurance. Look up COLI, C-O-L-I, Corporate on Life Insurance. This is how they fund the CEO's retirement, not in the stock market like people think. Why, why go to work and then gamble with your money? You work 30 years and now you're going to put your money at risk. Why? When you can get guarantees and have access to it. Liquidity, use, and control. Liquidity, use, and control. I talked about this a few weeks ago about luck. That's what it is. Liquidity, use, and control. You better get that laser, L-A-S-E-R, a liquid account safely earning returns. That's what it stands for. All right, I'm done, y'all. I'm short and sweet today, but we better stop shunning cash value life insurance and quit funding these tax-infested plans that we got to share with the government. Google U.S. Tech, U.S debtclock.org usdebtclock.org you will see the country constantly going into debt it's about two hundred and forty two thousand dollars per taxpayer that's going to pay it and I'll, I'll leave you with this those who understand it are going to earn it 
Those who don't are going to pay it. Our young people got to get involved with this early. Quit relying on your employer-sponsored program. It's better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it. But have some tax-free money somewhere. And if you make too much money for the Roth, the only bucket you have left is cash value insurance. It's not about dying. Cash value insurance has never paid a dead person. It only pays the person that's living. So thank you all. I appreciate you uh, getting on today. And, uh, and I'm going to get ready to um, go see if I can help somebody redirect money that's going to a tax qualified plan at work. Redirect the portion that's not being matched and create a tax-free flow of income that they can never outlive. All right? Thank you all. I'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.